Hey, my name is Josue, and this is my evidence portfolio number one. It's titled Self Portrait Series. And let's start. The first one talk about emotion and the image. And okay, we have we have 10 emotions, 10 codes, and this is the image, the image number one. Uh, Okay, at the compos composition code, here we see a vertical composition. If we divide the image in thirds, uh, we have the most, the most of the information on the right side. As we can see, we, we have here the most of the information. And the second one, anthropomorphic code, it means to give human things to uh, no living things or objects. And there are no anthropomorphic codes because in this image, we actually have a real person. The third one, it's the garment. Uh, the subject is wearing a shirt, as we can see, and a headset. Yeah, if I could, I could infer that he's a middle class guy and a kid. And the fourth one, we have an architecture code. And on this image, we just have a room with really low illumination that don't bring us more information. And the fifth is the object objectal code and on this image shows us a guy, a guy sitting on a gaming chair and we know that because of the form of the chair also we can see a happy man because of the expression in the in, her, in his face yeah like this and yeah he looks like he's loving so much the sixth one, the big smiling mouth on the closed eyes allows us to know that he's getting fun of something. And the proximity code, that's the seventh. In this image, we have a personal proximity because the subject is at his bedroom or at his office. And that's it. The eighth, the shoot and framing code, framing type portrait, and the shoot focuses the attention on the logging guy. As we can see right there, we have all the tension on this area. At uh, the Victorial Code, this image focused the attention, as I just said, at the middle the right side, because the information you wanted to be shown is there. And the last one, the Atmospheric Code, because of the light, we could know this is a uh, sunset or at uh, the sunrise time, and we have no light inside the room, but. We have a good luck source in the front of the subject that led us to see more about the things in, in the frame. And the second one is about context. Uh, what is such a cultural? Uh, we, I'll show you, there's the image, the second one. Now, what is such a cultural? Uh, the immediate context is a guy watching a computer screen with a face that shows his bored or tired to listen to whatever he's watching. And also we can know his beliefs or if he belongs to a religion just by watching the image. And the second question is what is geopolitical? Okay, um, there he looks like a Latin middle guy class because of the physical feature he has also because of the clothes and the headset. 
of, of the computer. Yeah, we can we can say that he's a middle class Latin guy. <laughs> and that's it. And the third image or the third self-portrait talks about elements and principles of art and design. I'll show you. Okay, there's the image. You can see it. Yes. There. there we go. Okay, uh, the elements. We have five elements. Five elements, sorry. Uh, the first one is the line. And in this image, we have a horizontal because of the shirt you use it here. And the object posted on the surface in the front, and like this object is posed on like a table. And the second one is the shape. Here we have an irregular shape uh, because the way on how the things have no geometrical shapes means we have an irregular frame. And the value. And there we have a high key tonal value because the image is composed in a grayscale. Despite that, the most of the image has tones of light gray. As we can see, we have no like low key tenue. Yeah, that's it. We have a lot of light that can let us to see to see what is in the image. Uh, okay, the color refers to warm that is composed to by reds, orange, yellows, and that things are golden. And the gold, the gold composition is like a blue, green, purple, and on. But we have no color in this, this image, in this picture. So we can't relate if it's warm or cold by them. Also, every color has a psychological meaning in order to express better what is wanted to show or, or to be expressed. But because of the grayscale, we can't know exactly what color we have there. And the last one of elements is the texture. It refers to the materials we can see in the image. In this case, we see the texture of the human skin, uh, just here, and the hands and the face, and the cut on clothes in the subject, like in his sweater, uh, plus a wood or plastic texture in the figure that he, that he's holding uh, the pencil or the the figure right there, like whatever he's painting. Yeah, and let's start with the principles. The first one is the balance. The distribution of this image has some equilibrium of information in the both, in the both sides. Uh, it refers to the left and the right side. As we can see, we could cut it by a half and we have a lot of information in the left side and a lot of information in the right side. Uh, okay, the second one, repetition or rhythm. It refers to have a sequence of things or a single one in order to draw a pattern. But this image doesn't have a repetition pattern or rhythm in it. Uh, the third one, the proximity. 
this makes reference to the relative distanceness or closeness between the objects. Here we have a clearly proximity between the subject holding the pencil and the, the thing that the object. And the fourth one is the contrast, the comparison of one extreme against another. And on this image, we have the comparison of big and small comparing the subject again among the, the figure. The proportion, the relative size of elements and the things. On this image, we have a common or normal proportions because it's framed in like in the front. So we have no distortion and all, all the things in there are balanced. Uh, the scale, yeah, the scale is the size comparing one element to another. We have the same thing as contrast to the size of the subject is an, like an average size. But in this picture, as long as we have a, a this frame like this shit, and the subject looks like really big or bigger like he, bigger than his. And okay, the focus and emphasis. All of the attention is focused on the figure. That's because the subject is paying attention to this blood, to this place. Plus the pencil he's holding is creating a vector that ends in on the point as well. And we can see it by those lines. The pencil he's holding is creating like a line at that point that ends in the figure and also as we can see right there the subject is watching the the same picture so we when we see this image we used to to bring the side at this point at this one. And the unity or harmony refers to the shapes, captures, and the image and how they make the image pleasant to see. But here we have no harmony despite yeah this this part doesn't look like so harmony is like a he it has no pattern or zero harmony okay that's it the movement or direction and the direction means to motion to the motion we could infer and the picture in this case we infer that the object is that the sorry that the subject is painting or drawing with the pencil as we can see well like he's holding this and we could infer that he's painting or doing something with the pencil in there and the last one is the depth. The change in the scale are suggesting depth comparing to the, the size of the thing among the guy. Again, like in scale and proportion. We, we have the, the close frame and the close shot. And the last one, the style poses, backgrounds, and uh, poses again. 
Okay. What are you trying to communicate with this image? That's the last one. I try to communicate the feeling or the, the energy that I enjoy while I play the, the guitar. Uh, the second one is, how did you do that? And what are the conscious decisions you have made to communicate the message? Uh, so I decided to actually use a guitar and shoot a frame while I was playing a guitar solo. And also I decided to try a common pose that rockstars used to do when they are at the concerts and stuff like that. And now use the communication process diagram that's like... Uh, that's what we are watching. So the source is an image, it's a visual code. The X coding is the outer of the image is playing the guitar. It seems like he's really enjoying what he, he's doing. That's like how the author wants the message to be to be perceived uh, the channel this will the image uh, by this presentation it's a basal channel and uh, decoding it's what we can see what we can relate when we see it in this case we see a guy trying to pose with our gear to get a good frame but we can't really know if he was playing actually or, or not. And the last one is the receiver. In this case is the person who's watching this video. So there we go. To the final reflection, we have three questions. The first one is, what kind of code in a soul portrait? Uh, no. But the first one, we have, what kind of code is a self portrait and how can, can I prove it? Okay, I... I think that it's a visual code because specifically is the own perception of the author on how or how he or she wants to be perceived. And well, I can prove it because I just used for self portrait to show you how I want you to to see me and how I perceive myself if I were another person. And the second one, why do we need a, an image culture? That's because uh, the human being is visual and we perceive so much information in, in a short amount of time just by watching something. But sometimes we infer things that are not actually there. Because of that, we have to learn about how every person could share a lot of things in their own way. Okay, we, we know that every person have a different way to express themselves. And well, that's it. We, we, we need to know what the people is really trying to, is actually trying to, to share with us because we could see an image, uh, the piece, uh, piece of art or, or something like that. And we could infer a lot of things about that, like about the context, uh, about what the author is trying to, to say. And well, things like geopolitics, socio-economicals, uh, etc. But 
we have no idea on what the author really thinks. And it's a good opportunity to, to get close to this, to this subject and study, study it better. And the third one, what have you learned about your own identity through the analysis of your self poetry series? Okay, I learned that I really relate me with low key tones. And sometimes I could refer, reflect an artistic or smart personality, but also I can express my feelings through image just by, by being me. So, and yeah, I did those, those frames like as naturally as possible. And I think I did a good shoot. I enjoyed this activity, to be honest. But all well, thanks and see ya. <laughs>